So David, before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Originally I started out as a, a techie in computers, went into consultancy, sales, business management, and then finally, as I mentioned, run my own company with the 30 years or so experience I'd gained. For the listeners out there, I know you live in the West Midland in Birmingham, but can you tell me exactly where you are based? Well, I'm fortunate to be based in Sutton Coalfield, very close to Sutton Parks. How long have you been a photographer? How do you define a photographer? Um, I suppose I really was keen on, on photography in the 70s when I was mad on motorsport and lived very close to Mallory Park. So I bought myself uh, an entry-level practique, a film camera, all manual, um, and used to go and take uh, photos of Formula Ford cars crashing into each other and um, got quite into it to the extent that I bought bulk film, loaded my own cassettes and uh, developed them at home. When did you actually take the leap from film to digital? Ten plus years ago, I got my first digital SLR, joined a local club and uh, really, really got back into it to the extent that it is my main kind of passion and hobby. What type of photography do you do, Dave? Of photography do I do? Well, um, I used to do a lot of um, street photography um, when I got back into it and even had an exhibition in Birmingham. But latterly, I've done a lot more studio portrait work helping a local club. Um, I also um, organise photo walks uh, for things like street photography. I also enjoy doing abstract work as well at the moment. Um, uh, which is quite interesting because you can always find something to to shoot um, where it's just looking for shapes, textures and tone because I predominantly shoot 99% um, of my images are black and white. I still shoot film um, ranging from Polaroid, which I love, uh, right through to medium format and just occasionally put a, a colour film in. I have mentioned before I develop my black and white at home and then uh, scan them and then do a little bit of post-processing. Are you still involved in any aspects of photography? I do a lot of photography. I do do a little a bit of paid work uh, providing assistance to a full-time uh, professional photographer which I find very interesting uh, basically being able to um, occasionally suggest ideas um, but as I mentioned doing a lot of work uh, helping with things like workshops uh, we'll be running a couple of zoom meetings showing people how to edit and improve their um, images uh, with the local club with a couple of other uh, gentlemen so uh, basically um, whilst I'm not earning any money I'm spending a lot of time uh, doing uh, photography one question I'm asking all photographers is, can you remember your first paid job? Um, when I was providing interim sales management for a web development company who provided SEO and social media services, one of their customers wanted some of their storage facilities and photographed to show what you could store in them and what people were using them for, which uh, when you look at how big a storage container, you'd be surprised what people are uh, using them for. Um, so I was quite uh, honoured to be asked to do this, provided some images, they were pleased uh, with that, and then provided further uh, images for other organisations, jewellery companies, also paid work for the local uh, Chamber of Commerce, photographing all their restaurants for their restaurant quarter, and various uh, other jobs, um, even a couple of weddings which I uh, avoid like the plague because it's, it's just not something that particularly interests me. Most photographers, whether they're professional or amateur, I hate that word, um, have at some point worked for free. What are your views on that? Um, well, it's probably best to understand what somebody means by working for free. Uh, just because you're not getting paid doesn't mean you're not gaining something from the experience and particularly when you're starting out if you're gaining experience for a different type of photography a different genre doing something quite different 
then it may be well worth your time looking to do something for free or at a reduced rate. Uh, so make sure if you're being asked to do something for free, you're getting something of value out of it. Um, otherwise, generally with these people who say, well, I'll give you exposure to all my followers, I just wouldn't go there. I'm sure you can spend your time far more productively um, by actually uh, starting your own social media uh, accounts and uh, getting your followers up on particularly Instagrammers. Flickr and websites really aren't the areas where people go to look to um, engage uh, photographers. So did you ever compare yourself to other photography? Not really. I mean, there were photographers obviously you like and admire and you try and understand how they get those pictures. <clears throat> but really, you want to try and find your own style. And that will come after a while. I think... Um, what you'll find is you'll admire people, try and maybe copy some aspects of those photographs. And as you get better and better, you will have your own spin and put your flavour on um, images. Um, and I think the other thing is about any photographers you admire, um, look at some of the really great photographers from the past and uh, get inspiration from them. And I know in the past that I've done a, a short video, which I shall put the timestamp here about the dangers of gear acquisition. Can you tell me um, your thoughts on that, please? It's a, a good question. Uh, gear acquisition syndrome, which we've all probably suffered from at some point or other. I think sometimes it's easy uh, to get carried away looking at the reviews and the magazines, always talking about the latest technology or the latest lens. And if you just buy this, f1.2 lens all your portraiture work will be so much better um no it won't be really um, if it galvanizes you uh, and gets you enthusiastic again then it may well do but i think um we're at the mercy of l very large multi kind of million billion dollar companies who pump a lot of marketing at us uh, with the prime um, objective as getting us to buy more kit and uh, I think there's far too much emphasis placed now on sensor size and pixels, which basically we don't see because we view on mobile phones. So have I ever suffered from it? Um, a little bit, yes. Uh, we all like a bit of technology now and then. And I suppose oh, I've got probably far too many uh, film cameras. I've got 35 plus that I don't use fully, although I have been gifted uh, most of them. Thank you for that, Dave. So now let's go on to a device that we all have in our pocket. Let's talk about mobile phones. What are your views on that? Uh, it's the device that 99% of all images captured every day uh, are taken on. And the quality, the low light capability is absolutely astonishing. If you compare the image you can now get out of a a good smartphone which will print easily up to A3 without you knowing the difference from a, a full frame um, digital SLR of 10 years ago or not even that long ago. So I think mobile phones are important. You tend to always have one with you so you can take an image. You can also use them to get ideas, do some quick snaps for projects later or you want to revisit somewhere else when maybe the lighting's better. So. I think they are a good um, technology. I mean, they're basically a, they're very good cameras. I think the other thing, uh, particularly around smartphone technology, is the advances. The advances aren't all in the sensor. It's predominantly with the software. And I see that affecting all cameras. It's the software where the real advances are making. Now, while sensors are getting better, bigger, the rate at what they're doing is a fraction of what software capability that is now available. You just look at portrait modes on smartphones and how it simulates a shallow depth of field and bokeh. That's all done with software. So when people tell you you need a full frame camera, it's not a full frame camera you need. It's a, a camera where the sensor and the software are working together in harmony to produce the best results. And going on from that, what are your views on mirrorless cameras? Mirrorless cameras are replacing digital SLRs. The, the mirror just basically gets in the way. It was a, 
an opportunity to see what you were taking is fairly close to what was being captured whereas with mirrorless cameras they're actually displaying what the sensor is capturing so therefore you're getting a far better idea and by removing the mirror it makes things smaller should be uh, lighter and also cheaper uh, although I think some mirrorless cameras don't seem to be fully embracing that, uh, that ethos. Knowing you a little bit Dave, I think I already know the answer to this question but I'll ask it anyway. Have you ever bought any equipment that you haven't used? Um, not really. Um, I think I've got some studio equipment because let's face it with the studio the amount of different types of lights, modifiers, backgrounds, accessories you can use the uh, the capability is almost innumerable in terms of what you can do and modify whereas if you're a landscape photographer there's one big light source and uh, you can't do too much about that so I've got a couple of studio uh, pieces of kit I've probably not fully used as much as I should do but uh, generally no I'm, I'm trying to be fairly realistic in what I buy and that I'm actually going to get some use out of it what advice would you give to photographers who are starting out today? Um, first of all, what I would say is try all types of photography. Landscape, portrait, street photography, still life, macro. Have a go at them all and what you'll probably find is one or two of them you suddenly really take to. You have some resonance with you, they kind of click and then you can really start to investigate and hone your craft by uh, using all the resources available now on on the internet to help you uh, develop uh, your skill and your kind of voice and uh, kind of style for that particular genre of photography. The second thing I would say is investing some gear but this gear happens to be books because the best way of educating your seeing eye is to look at good images. The more good images you see the more good opportunities you'll spot and you'll, if you spend some time with some really good photo books, looking at images and really looking, saying, why does that image speak to me? What is it that attracts me to that image? And then start to, to learn from that. Because the past masters of painting used to study each other. They used to go to exhibitions. So the best way, really, to improve your craft and your style is to get some really good photo books. And I would say that that's one of the best ways of improving your seeing eye. Uh, I've got 130 plus photo books. And virtually all of them are on photographers or types of photography, not the technical aspects of photography. So, uh, yes, get yourself some good books. And the other thing is um, investment, um, not again in gear, but in yourself. Go on workshops, uh, go on courses. Um, go out with other photographers who may not have the same style as you and you may bounce ideas off to each other. So really invest in yourself on courses, workshops and quite a few of the photography shops now are doing very reasonable one day courses. So I think that's another good way to improve your photography uh, when you're um, starting out. A bonus tip uh, is try and get it right in camera. I think far too often people think, oh, don't worry, I'll do that in Photoshop or whatever software they're doing later. No, if you get it right in camera, that'll always help your photography. You'll have less wasted frames and you'll spend a lot, lot less time on a computer uh, rather than being out there taking great new images. So I just want to give a big thank you to Dave for sharing his insight and his experiences. I know from listening to Dave that I have learned um, quite a bit about how to improve my photography and I'm not talking about gear, I'm really talking about developing my seeing eye. So thank you for that Dave.